Hello, good e afternoon, and welcome to the full force. Let's talk classified Frag Viper live with me as your host, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80, brought to you by Generals Joe's Reborn.com. Hope everyone is doing well. We are going to be getting stuck into, yes, you heard it, the Frag Viper um, on a Sunday late afternoon. I don't know what you call it. It's, it's just afternoon, isn't it, basically? Uh, but yes, we are going to be looking at the Frag Viper and all of the verge. Do the history. If you've if you've never been involved in the classified, let's talk classified episode before. Then it's quite simple. We ju I just talk about the about the character in its history, how it where it appeared throughout time, um, and of course how that could maybe inform a, a classified figure at the end. And we'll talk about what we could expect for the classified series frag viper hope everyone's doing well in the chat hope everyone's had a nice weekend i'm knackered right now i have uh, already been very busy today uh we had to go out and get a mattress a little while ago to put on the uh, the guest get up in the guest room bedroom yeah the guest room so sorry i'm getting all adult now not in that way but like like a you know yeah it, it's i'm just having to adult a lot today uh so yeah i had to take a very heavy mattress that was kind of like uh, what you call it, kind of packed, vacuum sealed, and like in a box. And it seems to be the heaviest thing in the universe. So I had to lug that up some stairs, which was fun. Uh, but no, it's all sorted. So I am now done with the adult stuff and I'm back on being a, a child on camera. Um, who else is in the chat? We've got Jamie Lynn, we've got Jedi Ben, we've got Ed, we've got The Real Zim, we've got Alfredo, we've got Chris G. Hello, everybody. I hope you're all doing really well. Uh, and to anyone that isn't in the chat, I hope you're having a great weekend. Right, let's get stuck in then, because we've got a lot to get into with the Frag Viper. I only said it like that because I hadn't got to the video bit that I had to click on, and so I was dragging it out until I could get to it so it wouldn't be as weird. Um, Scott says, Scott Skeen says, true story. When I first got my original Frag Viper, I misread the name as Fang Viper, which based on his weapon still kind of works. Yeah, I like that. Nice one. Hello, Chris D'Amato. Hello, Nufi. Hello, Future Fortress. Hope you're all doing well. Um, yeah, this is, yeah, so this is the Frag Viper, not the Fang Viper, Scott, the Frag Viper. Uh, that mattress might help with the eventual Xandar cosplay, lols. Has anyone ever questioned if Heavy Metal took his bang bang from Cactus Jack? Uh, well, that would be Metal Head, wouldn't it, Pass? And it would be, I don't know, actually. I've never i never delved into the voice acting of uh, the Deke cartoon, but we'll, uh, I might have to. Anyway, yes, so Frag Viper. Now, all of the name only reveals uh, very recently. Uh, we did get a few... Uh, we get what? What did Frag Viper come out? He came out with Saw Viper and Dial Tone, I believe, didn't he? So we're this will this will complete that phase of name only reveals, and that will leave us with the um, Road Pig and Blowtorch name only reveals, which popped up with Adventures in Collecting, and of course Once a Man Cobra Commander, which um, Emily dropped for us at WonderCon. So we'll be kind of I'm chipping away at them, chipping away. Um, so yeah, but this is a good one because the Frag Viper is actually a good one to get into because I think it's one of those ones where I've, I've seen a lot of people commenting about, you know, maybe not being completely like au fait with the character, not really knowing much about it, not really knowing, you know, it's kind of history of the figure and how it's kind of appeared later on and all that kind of stuff, you know, in media as well, which is very much blink and you'll miss it for most things, but we will kind of cover, I think, everything. I think we're going to try and cover everything that we found the Frag Viper involved in. And you may be like, oh, he's he hasn't thought of that one. But we'll just wait till the end. We might have. And if not, then you can let us know in the comments uh, what we've missed. But we try to just kind of look a broad coverage. Um, and first appearances usually in comics. I don't usually go into details beyond their first appearances. Not always. Sometimes we do. Um, and there have been other, there have been cases in, in, and probably in the Frag Viper as well, where the Frag Viper has turned up in IDW, in um, the new Skybound, a real American hero, I think, maybe even possibly. But um, I don't know, actually. I'm not sure if it has. But it definitely, the Frag Viper was definitely involved, I believe, in IDW's run. But the thing is, we don't, like, uh, I don't usually go into that kind of information, and I won't be on this one. I'll just be doing their first kind of appearances and their general appearances throughout 
uh, the Marvel run. Anyway, let's start, um, first of all, by shouting out Dan Kay, Dan Klingensmith Jr., and his books again, because I delved into these again for a bit of history on the design element of the Frag Viper. And there's some quite some cool stuff with this, actually, um, because we have some nice history as to the like the conceptual idea behind this particular character. And you could probably have guessed that the Basque sport of Hyalai had a lot to do with it. Um, of course, the, the kind of uh, Sesta kind of thing, but we'll get to that in a second. But anyway, the Frag Viper idea came from Greg Bernston, um, who wanted a Cobra Grenadier. In actual fact, he wanted a Grenadier to kind of counteract the Joe's hardball character at the time as well. Um, and he basically, and Mark Pennington actually designed, the, the drew the concept from Greg's sort of like, you know, description, but kind of like idea input and so on and so forth. And Mark then went and drew that um, concept on the right-hand side, which was actually at that point was known, he, I think he just wrote Gren Grenada, but I think he, I, he probably meant Grenadier, but Grenada was the, you know, was what ended up being written on um on the top of the actual uh, sketch. And as you can see, you've got the kind of basis there for the Frag Viper. You've got the the sort of those weird kind of like sash straps that kind of move from like the lower leg all the way up the leg across the body. Um, you know, that kind of weird little sash that kind of just can you, keeps crisscrossing across their body. Um, you know, it's, it's actually a very interesting design when you look at it. Um, what are we saying in the comments? Sorry, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, sorry. Um, Blow pig and road torch. I like that, Scott. I like that a lot. Um, I know nothing, Chris. Educate me. Oh, good. I'm glad. RKW, I will tell you everything. Weren't they basically grenade junkies, says Chris? Well, yeah, yeah. Just lugged grenades, basically. Uh, Frag Viper may not be my favorite of the golden era Viper types, but he's still on my want list above a lot of others, says Ed. And I have, yeah, totally. I'd have to agree with that, actually, I think. Uh, we'll get to my opinion at the end, I guess, when it comes to the classified element. Um, Frag Heat Knight were my first vi vi Vipers, says Scott. Frag Heat Knight. Good. That's a good selection of Vipers, actually, Scott. Um, I love the idea of Hardball grabbing a bat and hitting the pitch right back at the Frag Viper. Do you know what, past the pierogi? That is probably not far from their idea of the pitch in the first uh, instance, is it? I, I bet they were thinking that kind of stuff. The slinging arm is crazy, says Grizzlehorn. It really is kind of cool, though, isn't it? Uh, need that grenadine viper. <laughs> nice one, Scott. Anyway, yes. So if you look at the sketch, you can see that the, the the basic elements were there. Like I said, the design of the kind of costume, the sash, um, and of course, the Hyalai Sesta sort of device. Um, and the working name at this stage, as I said, was simply Grenada. And you can also see that the feeder was following the Sesta all the way to the top of the backpack, which again, kind of continues on, doesn't it, through the design of the actual figure. So it's not really far off from being what we what we know and love, the helmet being the only kind of thing that's slightly different at the moment. Anyway, the concept including, as I said, having a weapon that would allow the user to launch grenades great distances. Greg was actually playing the game Higher Lie. I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen this before. Go and Google Higher Lie. It is nuts. Um, I, I remember watching the game very young. Um, it was on TV randomly, maybe like Transworld Sport or something like that. One of those, we had that in the UK. It was like a European kind of sport roundup um, kind of show on a Sunday on Channel 4 uh, or Saturday. I can't remember. It was on the weekend anyway. And I remember kind of tuning into that and there'd always be some sort of like, you know, like German handball would always be on there. Uh, NBA, NFL, that kind of stuff. So it would, you're not just European, but it would be all over the world basically. And it was a European uh, show though, if you know what I mean. It wasn't European based. It was just made by like, I think like a, not that it matters, but I think it was made by like a French company. Anywho, that would obviously, it would show you worldwide, like Kabaddi. I remember Kabaddi, like that game. Have you ever seen Kabaddi play? That is the weirdest game ever. That was a huge trend at one point on Channel 4. They that was they used to like, like show all of the, it's like an Indian sport. And it was, you're kind of like in a, it's like in a pit, like a, a pitch. You've got two teams and one person is trying, is trying to get past a group of other people to get into the end zone kind of thing but they have to say kabaddi at the same time and hold their breath. It was so weird. 
It was so weird. Exactly. What the hell is what the hell is Kabaddi? Go check it out. It's K A B A D I, I think. Kabad I Kabaddi. And it's insane. Begins with a K. Anyway, High Ally is crazy. And that I remember seeing it as a kid, very young, and my dad knew about it because he'd been he'd been about a bit. He'd been in the RAF, so he'd seen he'd seen he'd seen a few things. <laughs> and um, and one of those things that he'd seen while he'd been in, I think that kind of area, I think like in Spain or wherever it was, um, he'd been introduced to it. Maybe when he was in Cyprus, he might have been introduced to it. But um, I remember him telling me, yeah, like high lie and telling me all about this crazy sport. And I'm like, whatever. And then I watched it on Transworld Sport and I'm like, this is nuts. It might even have been the frag viper that elicited that conversation. So I can't even remember off the top of my head, but that it might have been like, oh, dad, check this figure out. And he's like, oh, that's a that looks like a Cesta from High Life. Anyway, you know what I mean? So that was kind of like a bit crazy in my head. The fact that they did this was just nuts. Um, and yeah, Greg was actually playing the game. Hi, that's Greg Bernstein. When he came up with the idea to use the Cesta, the long curved wicker basket attached to the wrist, um, and gave that idea to Mark, who drew the first sketch of the figure. Uh, there you go. There it is. And uh, from that, boop, uh, I think that was everything, wasn't it? Yeah. The concept. Yeah, I've done that. Um, from that, Dave Dorman drew this presentation art. Again, this is all out of uh, Dan's um, creating G.I. Joe book. So massive shout out to Dan Kling and Smith Jr. for this. Uh, just in case you're joining now and you're going, hey, you're not calling out where you got it from. I, I already have done multiple times and good friends with Dan, and uh, have carte blanche to utilize the information from his book. So just want to point that out. Um, and anyway, so yeah, this is um, Dave Dorman's first piece of presentation art. He actually drew two. So the first one resembled the first sketch, right? As we just saw, the kind of helmet is very heat viperish, isn't it? Kind of almost very viperish, honestly. Um, a uh, couple more. Let's get to some. Hang on, some of these comments. I'm going to miss some of them otherwise, aren't I? Uh, oh, a dead frag viper would be on the cover of 306. That's interesting, isn't it? I should have I should have highlighted that as well, but I didn't. I wasn't paying attention to to that cover. That's annoying. Um, fragging frag. I know, right? Oh wait, wide world of sports. All the nutty sports were shown. Loved it as a kid. Grizzlehorn. I don't know. Is is that? Because it was Trans World Sport was the one I was referring to. Did you have the same show? Highlight is very popular down in the Miami area, yo. Two. Sorry, Chris. I saw you corrected yourself there. Dal Sim is a Kabaddi player. I tell you what, Scott, he, he should be. If that's not written into his bio somewhere, then it should be if it's not already and you're not just joking. Didn't the Aztecs used to play this using real human heads to launch out of those cestas? Stygian, that's crazy if that's the case, but possibly, you never know. Although I have heard it is a, maybe, I don't know. Now we need hardball. Yes, we do, Jeremy. Yes, we do. So as I was, get, sorry, let me get to the, let me get to this point here. Um, oh, it was basically the same show, but in the US and late at night in the 80s. Thank you, Grizzlehorn. So Wide World of Sports was basically like trans world sport. Awesome. Um, should do a Frag Viper and Rock Viper 2 pack. Name it Fraggle Rock. Paul, that is genius. Um, anyway, yeah, so it, this particular initial presentation art is effectively your Frag Viper as we kind of know them, but the helmet is very much very different here, isn't it? So they decided to change that uh, design, full-on helmet redesign, and um, we actually got this second version. Obviously, there now, now we're talking. This is the Frag Viper we know and love, basically. And the, the the also the weapon was changed as well. The kind of uh, rifle or machine gun was changed um, quite drastically as well. If you look at that one, look at that. It's got a weird little butt on it sticking out. And then this one's got, yeah. And now it's kind of, yeah, more like a, a weird bug looking head, isn't it? Like the big bug, like an alien head, isn't it, basically? Um, anyway, and as I said before, Greg had wanted a Cobra Trooper to go up against Hardball, the Joe's latest multi-shot grenadier. Um, uh, <laughs> sorry, I can see all the Fraggle Rock uh, comments now. Um, do, 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 do. Anyway, yes, so yeah, there you go. That is kind of like the design process that was uh, that was that went that they went through with the Frag Viper initially, and we get this beautiful Dave Dorman presentation art uh, as well to boot. So that is what would have been put up for. Here you go. This is what we want, and then the the Frag Viper version one was 
conceived. And here it is with beautiful card art, I have to admit. I do love this card art. Um, I'm not sure who did this art. Is this, I don't know if it's Greedo or Hart. I don't know, actually, um, who did the Frag Viper artwork. Does If anyone does know, please go ahead and let me know. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, it probably is known. I just don't happen to know that information off the top of my head. But it is wicked card art. Um, the figure is actually also pretty fun too. I did have this one as a kid, loved it. I had, I think, bought this in 89 off the shelf in the United States of America. So I was ahead of the game because we didn't get it until like 92. And we'll get to that in a second. But anyway, the Frag Viper version one was released in the United States in 89. Like I said, I picked it up on off the shelf, like just straight off the peg. Thank you. I'll have that. And was very excited for this one. And I think this is probably what started the conversation with my dad about High Lie because he'd have been there while I was going absolutely nuts in the toy store. Um, he came with the Sesta, he came with the gun, he came with three grenades, a backpack, hose, and tube. Completely unique, no parts reuse, uh, light brown and blue deco, which I actually quite get a vibe out of. I think it's quite sexy. And grenades attached to the pegs on the top of the backpack, which is pretty cool. There he is. There he is. Look, the actual, I really like this figure genuinely, and it gives me a lot of nostalgia uh, seeing it like this. Um, his submachine gun could be reused from the Crimson Twins. Was it? I don't think it was at that point. It, I, I'm going to double check because that wasn't a Crimson Twins rifle, is it? Not that I'm aware of any who's. And I'm just going to give it a quick check, but I'm, I was pretty much certain. Anyway, I'll do that in the in the background while I think about it. Oh, for the for classified, I see, I see what you mean. Sorry, Scott, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Um, Brother Malachi says I have one of the South American or Spanish versions. It's in Spanish text. Probably would be Spanish because in South America, we'll get to that in a little while. Um, I'm pretty sure we didn't get well. We got we got the frag viper, but slightly differently in Brazil. Um, but the if it's, it's Spanish Spanish card, it's probably a Spanish release um, because we did definitely get it in there. Um, is it on the card? Will be a giveaway. Um, is it is it a black card with kind of like an explosion background, or is it like does it have you know your Commando Semacao and all that kind of stuff on it? Because if it's just GI Joe on it, then it's just in its Spanish uh, release. But if it says Commandos in Macau and all that kind of stuff, then it's going to be um, Brazilian. Anyway, that should give you, let us know, brother, what, what it is. Um, anywho, I don't have to look at who bit now, do I? So there is your Frag Viper. Very cool, very cool figure. Uh, Portuguese is spoken in Brazil. Yes, it is. But it could be a Portuguese card released in Port. If it's the Acau one. Yeah, just the Akau one. Is it is it Latal? Is he lime green or is he in brown? This is quite this is important. <laughs> I'm gonna have to see uh because that I wasn't aware of. So we have missed one. We've missed a frag viper release in Porch in Brazil. Anyway, pretty close to the actual V1. I really want to see this now. Anyway, okay, we'll get to that in a second. So, Frag Viper, version one, there we go. Um, and there he is again, again, looking cool. I really like, again, I really like this figure. It bring like, I like the fact that there were like hoses left, right, and center. There was the, the feeding tube, and there was the hose that went from the helmet to the backpack. So there's a lot of cool little things going on here. Um, I really, really enjoyed, like, everything that was going on with the figure, the design, and all that kind of stuff. And it was a pretty dope O-ring figure. Uh, oh, gone too far. Now, the Frag Viper version one, also showed up in the in animated form in the 1989 commercial for the Mud Fighter and the Hiss 2. It is a complete blink and you will absolutely miss it, though. Oh, my God. One of the troops that emerges from the troop carrier section of the Hiss 2 at the back, and there you can see him um, in terrible quality because that was the best um, screenshot I could actually get. What does the hose to the helmet to backpack actually do? Is it oxygen? No, it was something to do with, like, I don't think I don't think they actually went into detail. Actually, I'll, let's just read the f file card because that'll tell us. So, the Frag Viper, Cobra grenade, grenade Thrower, an integral part of the Cobra Viper fire team, which, by the way, 
Cobra Viper fire team. That just makes me think, are we going to get a 788 fire team repaint of this? Eh? Just saying. I just like the fact that it says Cobra Viper fire team in there. The Frag Viper can toss high explosive fragmentation grenades with all the range and accuracy of an M79 or M203 a rocket propelled grenade launcher, but without the noise from the muzzle blast. The secret lies in the manual hurling basket based on the Cesta used in the Basque sport of High Ally. The Frag Viper Cesta is equipped with atomic, sorry, automatic feed and variable time fuser with a cable link to the helmet's automatic rangefinder. There you go. Cable link to the automat helmet's automatic rangefinder. That's what it is. Um, he's a tosser. <laughs> Um, a G.I. Joe armed with M203 40mm grenade launcher can manage a firing rate of five rounds per minute, and as soon as he pops the first round, everybody and his uncle knows where, it is, where he is. A frag viper with a 50-round magazine and automatic feeder can deliver 15 rounds per minute, and you'll never have any idea where they're coming from. Boom, there you go. Um, so that, that kind of explains it, basically. Um, saw someone even made a 788 vamp. Oh, that's nice. Um, anyway, I think like a cool, like a 788 frag viper is kind of is is possible is a possibility because it fits the the team, doesn't it? Fits that kind of vibe, and I think a really cool black and red deco would be great. Anyway, that's for the that's for future classified talk. Um, let's move through to a real American hero and the comic. So yeah, their first comic appearance came in a real American hero issue 92. It was a blink and you'll miss it feature. There's going to be a lot of blink and you'll miss it moments. Um, I've probably used that term actually about 50 times in here. Um, where is this weapon on the figure? What are you talking about, RKW? What was what was I saying? Let's go back. What are you talking about that's that's not on the figure? So I was saying that the cable link to the helmet's automatic range finder is the hose and the high ally basket for launching grenades with a feeder going into the backpack is on the figure is like the is the is that big curly thing with the hose what is not being described because that's everything I think I think that's pretty much everything on the figure anyway um yeah, so anyway, A Real American Hero, the 50-round mag. Yeah, it's on the backpack. The backpack is literally filled with 50 grenades. Um, and if you look at the backpack, you can see all the grenades in there. And then it feeds those grenades through the tube at the top of the backpack into the high, the Sesta kind of high ally thing, one at a time. And then, whoomp, and then it, another one comes out, whoomp, and then another one comes out, whoomp, like that, basically. And you can do like 15, you lug them. In a minute, you can do 15 in a minute. Yeah? Okay, cool. I think that should explain it all. Um, yeah, so first comic appearance, as you can see here, look at that. That's the first panel appearance in 92. In the bottom left-hand corner, just like the helmets, basically, in that little bit of brown and blue, you can just about kind of see it. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and then, honestly, most of their appearances are in the background, in, and it's all like multiple troop scenes. And, and stuff like that, basically. Um, and they were they were also. I've got more images. Yeah, here's 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 from the night issue ninety two. Now, keep remember that panel at the top because that's going to come back a little bit later. That panel is going to come back at the top there. Um, but they were also involved in the death of Sneak Peek. I say the sort of death of Sneak Peek in issue one hundred and thirteen because Sneak Peek. Spoiler alert doesn't actually die in this scene. Sorry if I've spoiled that for anybody. Um, but here you can see them, like the Alley Vipers, Frag Vipers, and I think there might be other Vipers in there. I can't remember who else was in there, but at the moment you can see Alley Vipers and Frag Vipers laying down some suppressive fire and throwing some grenades and stuff every now and again. You can even see the Cesta being kind of on show there in the middle panel to the left. Um, so that's cool. And obviously, like yeah, this is these are more examples of the uh, the frag viper in in that particular story. Who actually it's a frag viper that kicks one of the kids out into the into the street to kind of like you know as a human shield, which is a bit harsh. Um, that was not Melville. Melville, no, that was um, oh sorry, the previous one, the ninety two one, I think is 
but this one is in um god where is it benzene i think trucia labismia something like that it's one of those one of those places out there where sneak peek bites the doesn't bite the dust but he does um and here we have uh, dusty getting some uh, payback and taking a frag viper out as well um so there you go should have used the cesta to toss the kid i like that thought scott yeah just like yoink him across the road um so that's the frag viper in a real american hero i believe now in deke let's talk deke because what's funny about this is this is another blink and you'll miss it situation i was actually i probably should have written it in the bottom shouldn't i blink and you'll miss it um 13 seconds screen time i think they have which is not bad not bad their one and only appearance in the Deke animated series was in episode one of Operation Dragonfire, which I doubted because I watched Operation Dragonfire like 500 times and kept zoning out. And like, I'd seen it a bunch of times as well already. So I thought I'd, I would recognize it on, on, or what have you. But when I, I heard that they were in the episode one, I was like, nah, they can't be. I would have noticed them. And then there they are. They were quite clearly... They show up when um, basically the Joes get attacked in the monastery and they show up. There's uh, targets randomly and there are other like night vipers and destros there and serpentors there. So there, it, there's a few there. And of course, yeah, the frag vipers show up and we even get a shot of him using the cesta look. Isn't that great? There he is. Whee! Anyway, there's your... So they got technically they got an animated appearance in that commercial for the uh, Mud Fighter and the Hiss Two, and they get animated appearance in Deke. So that's fun. I like it. Um, not much else after that though. I, I don't think they really show up very often after that. Um, Brother Malachi, I just gave you the starting text of the Falkar for reference. Oh, that's cool, man. Thank you. Um, I think what you've got there is a South American frag viper standard, but I don't, um, I didn't know there was one. I knew that Latal was out there, which we'll get to in a second. Um, if you could, could you send me a picture, Brother Malachi? And obviously not, you can't do it in here, but that's fine. Could you send it to one of our social platforms, I, aka Instagram or Facebook or Twitter even? That'd be great. Send us an image of it. That'd be, I, I would really appreciate it, genuinely. And then if it comes through while we're on and I can actually show it, then at least we can talk about it. And I don't kind of miss out on the, on missing out on a, on a, on a, on a version. But anyway, there's your Frag Viper Deke. Fra can you see the Frag Viper Deke? <laughs> it's actually got quite a package there. Look, it's packing, packing heat. Oh, that's heat vipers I'm thinking of. Right. Next up, the Nez. Proper blink and you'll miss it. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. This isn't necessarily blink and you'll miss it. They do show up. The 1991 Nintendo Entertainment System Taxan game, the one that Pat absolutely adores. And it's a banger. It's a really good game. They show up here as well. Um, yes, I, yeah, I know they showed up in, is it Snake? Yeah, I'm not saying that because it always sounds like I'm saying a naughty word. But that Snake Eyes kind of little mini series thing that was going on in IDW. Yes, Mark, they do show up in that. Um, they, they show up in a lot of comics after the fact, but I, uh, I'm just talking about their initial appearances on, on this episode. So yeah, in 1991, they did feature in the Nintendo Entertainment System Taxan video game. We call it NES. You guys call it NES, I think. Um, but I say, I would say NES and I would say SNES as well, which I know really rubs Americans up the wrong way. Um, they appeared as standard level sprites in later missions and used their famous Cesta weapons to throw grenades. And there's a, an image of them um, hoying grenades. Uh, not at each other. There is a general hawk behind that Taxan video game, but I kind of covered him up. Um, that Viper in the Deke frame was left-handed. He was, Jamie Lynn, he was. <clears throat> um Dragonfire featured most of the 89 figures, but season one of the show was all 90, so the Frag Vipers wouldn't have been a priority. Totally, Ed, yeah, uh, absolutely. Jeremy says, say it right, N-E-S. Hey, it's what it's what we say in the UK. We say NES, we say SNES. Deal with it, baby. <laughs> um, and then uh, we'll move on to the UK release, because we're doing this in like order of operations in the timeline. So uh, version one was also released in the UK and Europe in 1991. So this was out way before. 
And this is what I was getting confused with what uh, Brother Malachi was saying in the comments. I thought there might have been this version, but with your kind of uh, different text, your different, um, you know, European text, what have you. But no, uh, the Portuguese is very likely, by the sound of it, Commandos and Macau release, which is crazy because I didn't know there was one. So same figure, deco and accessories as the US version. Obviously a different card back, but it was branded as G.I. Joe at that stage in the confusing and complex and convoluted branding scenario through all, all the way from Battle Action Force all the way through to G.I. Joe. Uh, we've had all sorts of branding changes. Action Force International Heroes, um, G.I. Joe the Action Force, G.I. Joe. That's it, I think. Anyway, um, man, I love that Cobra branding on the UK card backs. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like the, the the Cobra logo is pretty dope, isn't it? And it's one of those ones that they always like they always like to do a cheeky little Cobra logo that was slightly different. There was a fun Palatoy Cobra logo for the longest time, which was really funny, like a cartoony snake as well. Um, you know, kind of like wrapped around and kind of with Cobra written in it. It was pretty, pretty fun. Um, but, um, uh, they also say Z is Z. Well, I do. Yeah, exactly. Cause we are monsters. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was, it's a fun card. I do like it. Digital explosion, red phase going into black. And then the geos were blue phase, blue going into black with the digital explosion. It was, it was pretty dope. And then we had, we also had a different, we had like a kind of like a flash explosion card back as well on a similar backing. Um, loads of different card backs, honestly. It was kind of fun, kind of fun. Uh, there he is. There he is. That's the one I remember. <laughs> like it's any different, not at all. Um, and then we have the card, which again is exactly the same. I, I couldn't find any differences other than, of course, uh, a zoomed out part of the card art and the Cobra logo is different. And we don't have all of the trademark um, elements on Cobra and Frag Viper. We just didn't bother with that. But everything else is exactly the same. There you go. Um, but there's an example of it, so you've had it. Now, arcade game. Do you all remember that panel I told you to keep a, an eye on? Yeah, that panel from 92 was lifted for this particular cutscene in the 1992 arcade game by Konami. Um, now, they didn't actually appear as in-game characters, but it did show up on that still frame image during that intro story to the game. Um, but anyway, I, I, I kind of I, I kind of love the fact that they do show up in that. But again, it's just because it's really by default because they use that uh, panel from the comics directly and just popped it on there for their story, which is quite funny. Um, I always felt like this was a mere or lackluster boring figure as a kid, says Yellow Ben. That's interesting. I... Definitely did not feel that way. I thought he was kind of cool. Um, but, you know, we all have different responses to these things, don't we? 100%. Um, I loved the arcade game. Don't, don't, don't. I'm, I, yes. Yes. Correct, Grizzlehorn. The arcade game is so much bloody fun. So much fun. Ridiculously bonkers. I have to play it every single time we go to Up Down uh, in Des Moines when we go to Assembly Required without fail every single time. Um, how odd that the Annihilator is throwing grenades and the frag is shooting, says Ed. Yeah, exactly. In actual fact, let's look at that panel again, uh, just to get an idea. There it is. Yeah, it was, wasn't it, um, as well? It is funny that they'd kind of like just switched specialties for a short period of time there. Anyway, I just wanted to look at the panel originally as it was, just to kind of, yeah, look at it. I should have put them side by side just to show the difference. Um Game from 1992, use panel from issue 92. Conspiracy? No, Scott. That was just the only time they ever showed up. <laughs> actually, no, they were in a lot of effort. They were in a lot of issues, actually. There were a lot of special missions, and they were in, like, 92 and, like, the 113. And there was a, there was a few uh, issues they came in. But, yeah, maybe, maybe you're right with the conspiracy there. I used to use Frag Viper as the predator-like alien using his grenade hurler as a massive claw for gutting Joes. Ryan, I um, that's funny you should say that. Because I remember using Hydro Viper for my Predator, but the Frag Viper had, I felt like if you put the two together, you'd get the perfect Predator figure. Like the so, yeah, like I, I get what you're saying though on that one. But my my Hydro Viper just had that like, it was that helmet thing. You know how like, you know, the tss, tss, and then the taking the helmet off. The, the Hydro Viper just felt to me like Predator in that sense. 
Um, and that's one one I would use when I was playing Predator with my G.I. Joe figures. Um, Dutch was Grunt version 3, so Screaming Grunt. Uh, Roadblock, ver Tiger Force Roadblock was Mac. Uh, Dylan was Stalker. Spirit, I didn't have Spirit actually. So who was Billy? Who did I use for Billy? Oh, um, who did I use for Billy? That's a really good point. I've forgotten now who I would have used for Billy, but I did use one of those figures for Billy. It might have been Quick Kick, honestly. You know, like kind of almost topless, so you could do the the knife thing. I might have used Quick Kick for Billy, in in all honesty. And and I had uh, who was the one I used for? Who did I use? Ricondo. Did I use Ricondo for? Um, I feel like I didn't use Ricondo for uh, Blumin. What's his name? <laughs> Minigun, um, J uh, Ventura, Jesse Ventura. Um, man, my favorite movie, and I can't remember his bloody name. I, I can't remember who I used. I think it was Ricondo. Anyway, I used those. Th those are the figures I used for Predator when I used to play Predators with the figures. Um, That's going to really bug me now. Oh, good shout. I, I used Lifeline for Hawkins and for Pon... No, for Poncho. And for Hawkins... No, I used Lifeline for Hawkins. And for Poncho, I used Flint, I think. Either Flint or Falcon. I think it was either Flint or Falcon I used for Poncho. It's hard to remember, but I definitely... I just grabbed the ones that looked close enough. And I think... I, I want to also say that I might have used um, Pathfinder at one point uh, because of the hat. Um, I, why can't I remember his name? Someone put it in the comments, please. It's driving me mad. Oh, that's really going to bug me. I watched it three days ago. <laughs> I watched the whole thing three days ago. I watched the movie probably in the thousand. Blaine! Lane, you sob. Thank you, guys. Thank you, RKW, Ryan, Jamie Lynn. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I don't know why that that was such a brain <laughs> fart there. I tell you what, you guys put on a live stream and start trying to remember things that aren't on the forefront of your mind. I swear to you, it is live transmissions that do it. The pressure when you forget a name. If you, like, okay, I am terrible with names anyway, right? So when I meet somebody, I'll try and repeat the name back again. Oh, nice to meet you, yada, 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 or whatever, right? And I try and do that to try and lock it in there. But my goodness me, it's gone seconds later. You, if I meet a dog, if I, if I meet an owner and a dog, I'll remember the dog's name. <laughs> no problem. And I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why I can remember dogs' names and I can't remember humans' names. I don't know why it is a brain malfunction I have. And if I don't repeat the name, it's gone, right? But then you put, like, the pressure of, of the live stream. Forget it. Forget it. Anyway, there's your Frag Viper in the arcade. And you don't even doesn't even turn up in the arcade. Now, um, where we, let's talk uh, Brother Malachi, who was in the comments earlier. This is... The Commandos Emekau Letal version one that was revealed in Brazil uh, in 92 for the Forza Electronica line or Electronic Force um, and was in the lime green and blue deco. That is what I thought you were referring to. Uh, and in actual fact, there is also a Commandos Emekau Frag Viper release, which I wasn't aware of. So thank you for adding that. That can kind of be mushed into this as well. Um, so there you go. Now, the Letal came with gold versions of Sonic Fighter Dodger's backpack, Ali Viper's uh, rifle, Range Viper's launcher, Shockwave's pistol, and Countdown's gun. Gold versions of all those things. And also, massive shout out to um, uh, Yojo Brazil, who isn't isn't actually online anymore. We have to get this through the like the you know when you kind of do that kind of like uh, web archive sort of thing. Uh, to find it again, and uh, but yeah, I'm, I, it's re it's a great resource to have. Um, e even like I said, like not in its actual website form, but in that kind of web archive form. 
Um, and it's great to be able to kind of dip in and, and grab those. So Yojo Brazil was really good, and it's got all of the releases. And I will be checking that, by the way, very soon for Standard Frag Viper. Um, it's probably why I couldn't, I didn't find it because if Yojo don't make a note that that Frag Viper has been released in, you know, Brazil as this figure or what have you, then there's no way I'd have uh, known about the name, which I like. I think you said it was like something Vibero or something, wasn't it? Um, it's the first part. I mean, it's Viper, isn't it? But like, I can't remember what the first part of the word, the name was. Uh, Frag Vibora. Yeah, so maybe I should I should have known really. Anyway, um, Latal is the reason I'm so excited for Classified Frag. I love this guy, Eye Blinding Green. Ed, yes, indeed. Um, I'm gonna def I'm gonna actually get on Yojo Brazil right now. See if I can find it and sort of ham fistedly stuff it into this uh, section. Um, is there a way to search on this particular? Probably not. Because it's not a technical website anymore. Um, I have to go through year by year. So it was 89. So it probably would have been like 88 or, 80, or 18, uh, sorry, 89 or 90. Uh, so it wasn't re released then. This is crazy. If you've got a Brazilian release that isn't even on, that would be crazy if it's not even on here. I'm just having a quick look, just in case. When did he come out? He came out in 92. So um, I wonder if Frag Viper in Brazil came out in like 91. It's good for good for the for the show right now. Me just looking at my web, uh, website. Yeah, it's not showing up. I'll have to look for that later. Anyway, by the by, lots of gold, lots of green, lots of vibrancy. There's the uh, um, your file card as well. I actually tried to, uh, <laughs> I actually tried to translate this and uh, copied it over, and it just would not translate it for me. So I'm guessing um, I'm just an idiot. So there you go. That's your Latal file card that I can't decipher. Um, and then, of course, moving through to 2006, big leap. Uh, the second version of the Frag Viper was a redeco of the first for the Operation Flaming Moth set one of four Jungle Theatre in 2006. As I said, the figure came packaged with the Night Viper version two and featured a cool green camo deco, black helmet, and some extra accessories from its predecessor. So this one is kind of interesting, and I've got to say, I'm into it. I like the deco. This is a club maneuver, obviously a, a GI Joe collector's club maneuver, um, but. I do actually like the um, the decos on these. I think they're very sexy. And uh, there's your Frag Viper, of course, with the gear. I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling it. And it's definitely something I could see them doing in the future, even though we've kind of just talked about a bunch of things um, that we could see. Um, anyway, that uh, neon green, neon blue, silver and gold. Are we sure he's not nightclub for Scott? Yes. You're talking about Latal, aren't you? And maybe we're not, maybe not totally sure if he's not nightclub force or not. But anyway, Frag Viper version two, there he is in that kind of crazy cool. And I, I wonder if this might have been an ever so slight kind of nod to the green in, um, you know, in the previous in the Latal. Uh, it's obviously much brighter, but who knows? Because I mean, the Frag Viper's brown and blue, so you know, uh, they've got the brown in there with that sash. But I don't know. I quite like this. I like the the black helmet as well. I think it's really nice. And I think this would be a very vibrant sort of, you know, version to do in the Classified series. Plenty of options, honestly, with the Classified series, I've got to say. Um, I mean, we've already come up with one off that isn't, getting, like, we'll mention it at the end, but that, that the fire team uh, would be a great place for the Frag Viper to operate in. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's your Frag Viper. Now, a couple of cool things to note on the file card. So this one, this particular Frag Viper was given a file name of David T. Relier. <laughs> such, such an awkward surname. And also, it's reverse, obviously, Wheeler in, in back, backwards. So if you flip it, it says Wheeler. And of course, Terry Wheeler was part of the G.I. Joe Collector's Club at the time. I think he was a volunteer um, at the time, but he was, I think he was employed at some stage, but he did a lot of volunteer work for them as well early on. But anyway, Terry Wheeler. Um, was obviously part of the club. 
and they they kind of stuck his name in there cheekily um, by putting the T in there for Terry, obviously, and reversing the the name Wheeler, um, which again I, I thought it was quite interesting and worth pointing out on the version two figure. Um, and on there, you're kind of getting a little bit more kind of like um, information regarding you know their narrative of Operation Flaming Moth. Um, and yeah, that there's your kind of information right there. I don't have to go into it, but there you go. They had their own little narrative. There's I thought the artwork was really cool as well, actually. I do like this version of the figure, I've got to admit. Um Python Patrol Frag would look sweet, says Scott. Yes, I think there's a lot of options for the frag frag viper, definitely. Uh then we have version three, which was the first foray into the modern era, the modern four-inch kind of construction. And it's the Nocturnal Fire Set. Now, we talked about the Nocturnal Fire Set very recently with the Saw Vipers. So, you know, same images. <laughs> and we get three Frag Vipers in this particular release, as well as, and we'll come to it in a second, uh, a, another um, related figure. So, in, like I said, in 2013, it joined the Nocturnal Fire Set, and there you go. That is your version one um, homage in uh, the modern 4-inch. You know, the Sesta Massive, I think it was basically scaled up from the original, uh, which is kind of cool. And um, everything was pretty much on point apart from the rifle. I think the rifle's slightly different to the one um, that the original had, of course. But no biggie, is it really? At this stage, they can kind of be given any sort of rifle. I mean, that's not what's iconic about the Frag Viper. Um, and I don't really mind what kind of rifle they get given. There are plenty in the line already that you could give them just for the sake of it, really. I don't need another kind of another rifle necessarily. Personally, I don't. Um, but if they do do one, then great. It's the Sesta that's the important thing. The feeding tube. I love calling it the feeding tube. The backpack. You know, grenades. Like maybe kind of having them like slot into the backpack or feed into the back. I mean, it's not going to feed the Sesta. That would be mental. But you know, having loose grenades is kind of important. I think on this particular figure. Um, for the classified version anyway. Um, and we also got uh, file cards for them, of course. And I think it's, uh, they, they call them Cobra Demolitions team here, which is kind of cool. Um, and the Frag Vipers can toss high explosive fragmentation grenades with all the range and accuracy of an M7. Yeah, so it's basically the same. They call out the Sesta. It's it's effectively the same, slightly different. So they they, instead of calling it the fire team, they call it the demolitions team, which is kind of fun. Uh, but everything else is pretty much the same, isn't it? Yep. <clears throat> so it's the same kind of from their original file card. The only reason I put the file cards in here is because the next one uh, is actually even more interesting because it gives us a bit more of a uh, sort of like insight into what Latal could be is as a character and so on and so forth. Speaking of Latal, uh, I put version two, but technically Yojo consider this Cobra Latal version one because the first Latal... I guess wasn't GI Joe technically. I mean, it was, but it was, and it. I, I don't know. I, I personally feel like it should be another version. Uh, it should be V two because the first Latal was a different character. It was a different deco. It was in a different sub team. It was it was specific for Brazil. I think it's worth kind of doing, you know, and making that uh, an actual thing. Do you know what I mean? So. I don't know. I, I would have said version two personally, but they just they decided to call it a version one because it's Cobra Latal as opposed to Latal. Um, so the same 2013 box set, of course. Uh, homage to the original Brazilian Latal release, same lime green and blue deco, and featured copper accessories as a nod to the original gold weapons. So not going completely ridiculous with it. Arctic is a good shout, RKW. Again, we'll get to those at the end. We've got a lot of different options for Frag Viper, and I think every single one of them has merit, genuinely. Um, and we could see. We could see it. If it's a popular one, we could see it pop up a few more times. Um, anyway, that's your Latal. Uh, there's another shot of it with the back of the bazooka kind of backpack with the, the shells that you could pop in the old uh, launcher as well, which is pretty dope. Um, and also got this cute, really cool dossier with the artwork, which they did. They basically did this twice. They did it with the Frag Viper Deco, and they did it with the Latal Deco. And the information is basically taken from the file card as well. But they put it in dossier uh, form, and it was available. It was like a pullout, wasn't it, in the uh, magazine, the Joe Con kind of Collector's Club magazine. Anyway, 
that's that. That's Latal. And then we get the, the actual file card. So this is what's interesting because I love the fact that they give the birthplace presumed Brazil. I love that. It's like a nod to the Brazilian Latal. I love that. I think it's really cool. They also make him the Frag Viper Commander, which is really cool. So again, it, it's making it almost certain that we'll see this in the classified series as Latal, as the Frag Viper Commander or head leader or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the mysterious Cobra Latal is a commander of the South American unit of Frag Vipers. He is a superb chess player and guides his troops with the same tactical efficiency of moving pawns into dominating positions around the board. He fights alongside them with an array of weapons chosen to best thwart any dominating military force. His pinpoint accuracy with a bazooka can easily destroy enemy tanks, and the hail of bullets from his submachine gun can compel even the bravest of infantry to retreat. As part of the Cobra Demolitions team, he uses the Frag Vipers to spearhead assaults that destroy enemy installations, armoured vehicles, emplacements, weapons and personnel, or to weaken their fortifications. This makes it easier for Crimson Asp to carry out her sabotage operations for Cobra Mortal. Again, like tying in all the other characters that, that were involved in that box set or other box set. And I think it wasn't, they were all in that box set, weren't they? It was a cracking box set, that was. Um, so yeah, I, I really like that. Uh, Latal birthplace action on the Swiss Italian border. <laughs> nice one, Ed. I like how you, I like your thinking and the jokes. Uh, but yeah, Cobra Latal, I could see definitely see this as the commander for the Frag Vipers in Classified. Now, bonk. Now we get to let's talk Classified Frag Viper. So, like I said, um, lots of blink and you'll miss it kind of um, appearances in media, but. There as much as as much as I could find about the Frag Viper, and I did miss one at least one. Well, let's say two things: um, a real American hero in IDW, although it was kind of by design, and the other um, kind of appearance um, is this. I still want to see an image of this though. Uh, if you have sent it to us in any way, shape, or form, brother, um, I can't see anything coming yet. But I'd love to see an image of it just so we can kind of talk about it because I think that's really cool. Anyway. So with that said, let's talk classified. Now, the obvious first port of call is what the figure we're expecting to see is going to look like. And I think it's very clearly going to be this version of the Frag Viper. I mean, I don't see any other version or color or deco. And we know, I think, what do we know about the Frag Viper? Um, it's been name only revealed, so I probably have revealed something else haven't i uh listings wise let's have a look just to be certain yes so we know that the frag viper is coming in the standard retail four figure wave right because we know that it's grandpa is the code word isn't it so we know that it's going to be one of the kind of standard four figure waves mainline and because of that we can pretty much safely assume it's going to be uh, this version, right? It's going to be, you know, I, I expect to see maybe not a removable helmet. I don't think it's necessary. I mean, balaclava head, maybe. Maybe. But I, I, I could see them just doing a molded head helmet, right? I, I don't, they don't need to go nuts with that one for me personally. I don't need an unhelmeted frag viper, um, you know, with just a balaclava head. I don't necessarily need that. But it would be cool. And I would be, down for it if they did it right with like transparent eyes with like a tint on the glass. I think that'd be wicked. But I get it. If it's going to be standard mainline, doesn't have to be crazy. Um, I definitely need some sort of hose going from the helmet to the backpack. I need that. And of course, the backpack needs to be as detailed with all the grenades. Grenades attached like you could attach grenades to it in it. I think that would be kind of fun. Um, that would be really, 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 really cool. Um, and the backpack obviously needs a hose going to the cesta. The Cestra obviously needs to be there, and they definitely need to have a rifle as well. So I think that loadout is pretty cool. And then, of course, it does have a holster and a and a sheath, a knife sheath. So definitely a pistol and a knife as well. And then, obviously, secondary wise, maybe do the yeah the kind of sash as secondaries. That's really cool. Uh, do that as a secondary. I'm cool with that. Um, Stanley says, I never understood the blue sash. Yeah, it's a little bit of, it's a quirky design element for sure, uh, but it's certainly something that is quite iconic to the design of the figure. So it's something I definitely feel like they need to include and incorporate. Now, as you can see, the original figure decided to put the Cobra sigil in silver 
on the blue sash and then fold like have it like all creased up and everything which i think is quite an interesting play when you've got that whole chest on the right hand side there on its right hand side um our left as we look at it um to kind of play with and obviously that's something that they decided to do on the on the club release um and put the the logo in black on the on the kind of actual flat surface which makes more sense really um I would expect them to probably do the same in the classified figure. I don't expect them to kind of go so close and, and you know, with, there, there might be some updating going on here is what I'm saying. Hello, Joe. Um, but yeah, like I think, I think we, we're going to be seeing something like a mishmash of what we're seeing on screen right now. But I definitely do need to see uh, the hoses and the and the tubes and all that kind of stuff. I think it just adds to the fun of it all. Uh, so yeah, definitely. And they could use the same hose that we've had for uh, a couple of figures now. Um, what's the one that I'm thinking of? Obviously, tripwire is pretty cool, but uh, I don't. I think there's another thicker one, isn't there? It's not barbecue, is it? Who has that ruddy hose? It, maybe it is barbecue. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Is barbecue is that kind of thick hose, isn't it? Um, yeah, like, or maybe just do something new then in that case. It doesn't have to be something that's already in the line. Range Viper, thank you, Chris. Where I'm looking at you, Range Viper. Where what are you doing? Where is the Range Viper? Where do I keep where do I keep moving these figures? There he is. Yeah, a little hose in the helmet, but I'm talking about the feeder, the feeder tube. Um, I think it would be the barbecue one I'm thinking of, but anyway. Yeah, I, I, that's what I want. I, I want to see maybe, I want to see those elements 100%. Um, oh, Jamie Lynn, that's a, not a bad shout, actually. Not a bad shout. If you're going to update it, right, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, honestly. Blue incorporated into some kind of body armor or plate carrier vest. Yeah, I mean, armor them up a little bit. They're dealing with grenades at the end of the day. Um, so some sort of protection might be quite, you know, welcome. So if you kind of tactical them up a little bit, and then for a retro release, you do the sash secondary. I think there's something that in that as well. But this is one of those figures that has so many potential repaint opportunities as well. I don't even think a retro version needs to be needs to be necessary. I think we could just get away with a standard four-figure wave frag viper that covers all of the, you know, all of that original version's, you know, things. Uh, but I do like the idea of Jamie Lynn of if you're going to update it, give it some cool, you know, gear. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. I think that's, that's quite a good idea. Uh, the Range Viper is somewhere, yeah, where you could start, like, nicking a few things uh, for this one, like, you know, rifle and, um, you know, other stuff. Secondary, maybe, even. I don't know. What would you guys think about that? Because I think I sort of want to see the Range Viper, but again... This is one way you could do a bit of an update and get like, yeah, kind of body armor or gear or something. I think that would be really cool. Stanley, which sport uses the ball launcher? Uh, it's called High Ally, J-A-I-A-L-I-A. -A -A, and it is a um, uh, a sport, uh, I believe, originated in the Basque, the Basque region of, uh, of Spain, right? Basque region? Basque? Basque, Basque whatever you want to say. But anyway, the Basque region, um, and that, that's where it's kind of originated from. And it has, yeah, like it's kind of like a wicker basket hook thing that has the yeah the ball in it, and they just absolutely launch it. And then the other guy has to kind of go after it, catch it on the rebound, and launch it as well. And they have to kind of like, yeah, get, get points and stuff. It's nuts. It's nuts. I'm here for the lacro lacrosse commandos. Carl, there's a lot of lacrosse commandos. There's a lot of lacrosse drops in uh gi joe isn't there um you've got the lacrosse stick that uh thrasher has and i want to say is thrasher wearing lacrosse body armor as well um i want to i want to say road pigs armor is nfl but i might be wrong like the nfl um kind of modified chest and shoulder kind of protection but um i do feel like there's a bit of uh you know there's a bit of lacrosse in G.I. Joe. There's a lot, there was someone that liked lacrosse at Hasbro, I think. A lot of reuse potential here for worms, the Cobra Maggot driver. Possibly Jason, but I, you kind of think they would need a more shirt-like torso, wouldn't you? Sort of like kind of, you know, it's because I know that, that they have that kind of almost like very formal uniform sort of vibe, don't they? Um, 
The color, though, very similar. Um, maybe Whip Snakes isn't a code name, but an actual lacrosse trooper. That's genius, Ryan. I like it. Uh, yeah, Road Pig definitely uses football shoulder pads. Cool. Uh, I need a retro range viper for us that got hosed by Wally World. <laughs> Big time, Chris. Um, <laughs> an improvement to the bodysuit so it doesn't look like long john underwear is okay a okay with me says ed yeah totally um it's old school football newer pads have gone smaller by yeah big time stanley yeah but effectively that's what it is it's it's an it's nfl padding that road Ro pick has um yeah cool all right then noise anyway that's your standard Ro frag viper right then of course you've got your letal repaint now this would be you know technically um, I went on and on about what was it, uh, female dial tone, as in Jill Morelli, um, last time, saying that she's her own character, so she'll get her own episode if they ever bring her out. Latal sort of needs his own episode as well because it's his own character. It, you know, it's not the same thing. The problem is, I've already cut you cover one figure, and 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 that's pretty much it with Latal. So you know, or these figures. I've kind of covered it. So we don't really need to do a let's talk classified Latal if that ever happens, um, which is a shame because he kind of does deserve his own episode, really. Um, maybe I could get into that um, Frag Viper release um, in Brazil that I missed um, in that episode. And we'll just go over the same information here. But it's, ob I mean, it's going to be obvious what we're going to be getting with Latal as well. So I probably don't even have to do that episode because it would be what we have as a Frag Viper repainted in lime green. Keep the blue sash, but go lime green with the body. Amazing. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that's that's a pretty simple one, and one that I could see them doing as like, you know, maybe a three pack, like the Vipers set with a with a, a commander and two frag vipers, possibly, but maybe more likely just Latal on his on his Todd. Um, yeah. So that's another option. Obviously, another one of the options we mentioned before I move on again was the 788 fire team. Um, we also mentioned Python Patrol. And the other one that was mentioned that I kind of kind of breezed over a little bit was the Arctic. And I think that would work too in all white. This one is, I think you can get away with lots of different versions because it's effectively a very base, sim simple base design that if you apply different deco to just keeps giving you different things and you don't have to do a crazy amount of extra tooling yes you could give them a bit of fur around the neck or like a you know fur and a jacket a winter jacket if you wanted to go a bit further with it or further get it or you could do just a white repaint um i think any of those things would really 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 be cool and like i said the 788 fire team makes a lot of sense python patrol is a good shout but i don't i think the fact that it doesn't have precedent as Python Patrol means that you might, you, you know, it's it's further down the list where there have been other things that are precedent uh, you, you can work to, including this version, which I think isn't a bad shout for a repaint, honestly. And I would be quite into this because I think it's really cool. I love the camo. I love the brown sash, the red Cobra logo, the uh, the black gear, like the helmet, the blue kind of lenses, even though there's kind of gold sections on the helmet as well. I know, I just think it's really cool. But yeah, a white frag viper with a wolf pelt is a good idea, Scott. Yeah, exactly what I'm saying. Like, you could do more to it to make it more Arctic-y, uh, but you don't necessarily need to because of its base design, you know? But this, I think this is a possibility. Not not even just like a possibility for them that it's going to happen, but I think this is one that I think would be really, really cool. Uh, and again, a beautiful version of the Frag Viper. Um, maybe you could do this as the kind of commander, and Latal could be his own character. I don't know. But either way, um, I love this. Maybe this is just a jungle version of it. You know, like this is the jungle. We do an Arctic, we do a 788 fire team, we do Python Patrol, we Latal gets his own repaint. Everyone's happy. Um, but there you go. Yeah. That is, I think, everything. To, to cover on the Frag Viper. Um, and that one's a nice, neat hour and a bit. We have gone over a little bit, but, you know, I, I always do. Um, now, let's talk, let's kind of switch it to you guys and let's get into a, a few little... you have any questions about that, 
Are you excited for the Frag Viper? Uh, what are your expectations? And let me know what um, versions you want, please, and thank you. What we got? Uh, that's a nice figure, says Jason. It, this one, absolutely, isn't it? Gorgeous. I definitely get that version too, says the real Zim. Um, and, and yeah, it, it's just next level, isn't it? Uh, Carl says ice pick launcher. That would be violent and crazy, wouldn't it? Uh, I see that deco in purple and grey for Python Patrol. This one. Mm. Yeah, that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? So purple, grey, and then maybe the the pattern on the base body might be a bit too much. So if you did the pattern on the sash, I think that would work. The kind of, you know, the the, the uh, actual kind of snakeskin pattern or the cross hatching. Uh, that would be really cool on the sash, wouldn't it? On, on the gloves. Gloves, boots, and sash. And then the rest of the body you could have as like, yeah, you kind of another another base color. Um, different to the helmet as well, though, definitely. Um, uh, we need snowball grenades for the frag. That's so friggin' true, wouldn't it? For the Arctic uh, frag viper just lugging snowballs. <laughs> That'd be so much fun. How much fun would it be, though, to have the Cesta in white and the backpack in white? You know, that'd be kind of fun. And then like, obviously the main body in white with the blue sash. And then you could have the helmet as like something else like chrome or like black or something or or white again. Um, it'd be kind of fun to mess around with it. Or you could have the helmet blue to match the sash. And blue is quite an arctic -y color anyway, isn't it? That'd be kind of fun. Or maybe a white helmet with blue lenses. That would be even sexier. Um, Fragging can't wait, says Carl, for the Frag Viper. I like it. Uh, White says, I would prefer to have a specialised hand that can actually hold a grenade in addition to a trigger finger hand. That's not too... Yeah, actually. Um, that's not a bad shout. That's not a bad shout at all. Just so we can get, like, yeah, the grasp the grenade and everything. Maybe they might do that if you have loose grenades with this figure. You know, they might actually have to do that. Um, the snowball fight scene from Elf... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Cobra blue uniform with red sash and brown boots and gloves, says Jeremy. That's nice, yeah. And look, a blue and red. I like it. The cobra blue. Uh, I like how you wrote unicorn, though. That's funny. A cobra blue unicorn with red sash and brown boots and gloves. That's even funny when you say it like that. I really want fire team, Latal, and this camo version now. Chris, you need to make them happen. How am I going to make them happen? Frag Viper is a cool figure. I wouldn't want to play any sport that requires throwing anything against this guy. I know. Are you kidding me? Um, I love. I, it's one of those things that you don't. As a kid, I kind of, you know, just thought it was cool looking and didn't really think too much about the whole lugging the grenades thing. But it, it was. I don't know. Just still, when you think about it and break it down now, there's that you could launch that bloody thing an absolute distance. Like absolutely hoy it and a mile. Um, I want to try it now. I want to make a channel, right? What do you think about this? Here's my pitch for a, for a YouTube channel, nerd based YouTube channel, where I go out trying to create things in reality that exist in GI Joe, and one of them would be the Frag Vipers grenade feeding Cesta launcher. Uh, but everything would be nerf based. So it wouldn't be a case of like actually making military grade grenade launching materials. It would be making something that then would be, you know, launching nerf grenades, um, stuff like that. Just making it like a bit less violent and more fun. Um, but things like that. And not necessarily just G.I. Joe stuff, but like, you know, re recreating and making things that are in the nerd sphere in real life. Um, I'd really like to make um, things like, you know, like uh, the Thunder Machine, which I know has already been made, and someone has a Thunder Machine, and it's incredible. Um, but that's, this is what I'm getting at, like a YouTube channel that goes through the process of you creating it and making it and building it and all that kind of stuff, and uh, going through that process. Um, I think it would be so much fun, sort of like a you know, like an Adam Savage sort of kind of vibe or a Mr. Beast sort of vibe, but like, you know, on a grand scale, you'd want to make it pretty, pretty, pretty big. 
But um, things like that. And I'd love, because I definitely, I've said this many, many times. If I were a billionaire, for one thing, I would be constantly creating things that created money that I wouldn't ever see. It would just go out to like charities and stuff like that. So I would have like things generating tons of money just to kind of like give back. I think that would be quite cool. And one of those things could be a YouTube channel that gener all the money generated from the YouTube channel could go elsewhere. Um, but obviously my capital would then be put towards making these ridiculous things like a real life tactical battle platform, which I still want to build. I know it's ridiculous. I kind of want like a lakeside property, right? <laughs> this is why you'd have to be a billionaire to do it. And I would like, like on the lakeside part, you'd, you'd have, you know, it, it kind of the tactical battle platform would be in the lake but with the bridge bit that would come down would reach the land. So it would be one of those things where you could, the bridge would come down, reach the land, and you could drive your armadillo on there, like the card arts shows you you can. You could fly your Skyhawk and or your Dragonfly, and you could land it on the helipad. I want to make it to sketch, like, you know, to code, like actually make it like a proper little tactical battle platform, but effectively like a like a real life version of the toy, and have that in a lake on the back of my property. How freaking amazing would that be? Don't tell me that wouldn't be the coolest thing you've ever seen. And then to be able to just hang out on it, go into the computer room, do some computer stuff, walk through the little um, hallway bit <laughs> under the <laughs> under the the helipad, go into like the um, you know the little bay that's got the the weapon storage and the and the crane thing the kind of like winch crane thing like you know just how much fun would that be and then you get like little boats and and have them hossing around it like but actually like you know a water moccasin and a moray and and you know and a devil fish and stuff like that it would be phenomenal and i want to be able to be the person to do that but I don't have the capital to do it. So that's my pitch. Um, I'll host it, and I'll be the person that does all that stuff, but we just need funding now um, in order to make this happen. So if you're watching this channel and you're thinking, actually, that sounds ridiculous, here are my other kind of ideas. Obviously, it doesn't have to be all G.I. Joe-based, but that has to happen. That, there's no you know, question. A real-life mobile command center? Anyway, we'll come back to that. Um, I want to I wanna make a full size castle gray skull just like the toy but full size maybe upgrade some elements of it so it's kind of like a little bit more you know whatever but it would effectively be a freaking real full size castle gray skull i think it would be amazing uh, snake mountain as well you could do that too but like you know make it like out of really top end kind of you know act, maybe more like actual stone <laughs> here was the other one boulder hill yeah find a kind of great perfect spot for it obviously probably don't have the actual mountain collapse and have a boulder come down but you could build the gas station fake one into and also not on the main road so people don't actually think you're a gas station but like in an, on property that you own a lot of space around and then build like your your actual you know the gas station section um and have the, the thing open up into the the side of the rocks. I just, I think it would be amazing. It would be amazing, wouldn't it? I don't know. I just think it would be such a cool um, channel. And I think people would watch the crap out of it. And I think it would be so bonkers that people would be like, yeah, let's watch it. And it would generate a ton of views, I think. It is expensive, but it would be done on the expensive end, but not on the stupid end. But this is why we have to be billionaires in order to do it. And too many billionaires are too like, oh, no, we're just going to keep it all and just do things for ourselves and not make Grayskull. <laughs> like, that isn't for myself. Do you know what I'm saying? That's so funny. Um, but, like, you know, there's a reason people have that sort of money, and it's because they don't really give it away necessarily. But, like, I think it would be really fun to do, like, a channel that went into that. Maybe we have to start small. Maybe we have to start with, like, the odd vehicle repaint for example. Maybe one of my jobs is to track down like a Lamborghini Cheetah prototype or was it the M 
X11 or the MR11. I can't remember the name of the vehicle now, but the other one that was that the Vamp was based on. Just locate that and make a Tiger Sting. Yeah, I went straight to Tiger Sting, and I know that's upset everybody in the comments, but that's where I'm going with it. Um, what the hell, Chris? I've got WrestleMania to get ready for, and you're still live streaming. Sorry, Steps Toys. I'll bring it to a close now anyway. But that's my that's my pitch for the ridiculous YouTube channel. If you like that, let then we've got to get it moving, but I don't know how. So um, we'll see. We'll see if any um, entrepreneurs are watching and want to give me loads of money to start this ridiculous YouTube channel. Again, I think it would be so much fun, but I'd have to, it would have to be my main gig and then full force would have to be like the live streaming at the evenings <laughs> again, wouldn't it? Um, Stanley says, over under, if you get a name only reveal in your interview, it will be IG bat. Oh, 100%. It's going to be that. It's going to be that. <laughs> anyway, I'll let you go and enjoy WrestleMania, guys. Thank you so much uh, for joining me uh, for the Let's Talk Classified Frag Viper, which obviously turned into an absolute mess, did it not? Um, but it's been uh, an absolute load of fun, as, all, as it always is. Um, I will be back with loads more content. Loads more, actually, to come. It's ridiculous. Um, we've got... Um, the Emily Lenny Tony interview this week. We've got. Um, it depends on approvals, but we uh, it, uh, we'll see how it's going with um, Matt and shooting the galaxy. But we should be able to get something very soon with that as well. And of course, any news that breaks and what have you. Um, yeah, that's it pretty much. Uh, stay fresh, cheese bags. Can I smell what Chris is cooking? Oh, actually, I'm hungry now. I'm gonna have some food myself. Uh, go and enjoy the show, um, the WrestleMania show. I will be back, like I said, um, in the week probably. Uh, oh, actually, I've got an update for you guys on Monday. Uh, listings update. There you go. There's something I've nearly forgot. So we've got a listings update on Monday. It's nothing crazy, but it's an update. So we'll be getting into that. Um, I will see you then. Um, and if not, if there's any other news, then we'll merge it into that. But I will see you on Monday for sure. Um, have a great rest of your weekend. Stay fresh cheese bags. And as always, after three, you know what to do. One, two, three, full force. Frag Vipers. That's it for this installment of the Full Force News Burst. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. See you next time. And as always, full force. Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on X, formerly Twitter, at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Full Force. We've also added a brand new Instagram so check us out there as well at The Full Force Podcast and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on any of those platforms with feedback and questions. We also have a Patreon page so if you want to show your support for the show, see your name up in lights on these videos or or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click on the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force